Yes, yes. What's going on, y'all? This is Master Ace from Brooklyn, New York, and you are tuned in to Sherwood Radio. Real hip hop over here. called Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, in my neighborhood in the summer times around late 70s, there would be these outside parties that would happen in the, on the basketball court. DJs would bring equipment uh-huh. out and they would play music. At that time, it was disco. That was the really the, uh-huh. the predominant music that was being played was disco. But, um, you know, Chic, Good Times was one of the records that rappers, neighborhood rappers would start rap over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Um, that was my first exposure to the culture was seeing these parties we call them jams but these jams in in the park i was young maybe 12 um but just going to the park and i I can only stay out there until the street lights came on so i would be out there you know until those lights came on and then i knew i had to go go home that was the signal yeah and i it's also mentioned in your song yeah and when the light came on I would look up at the window and I would see my grandmother looking out the window and she would say, sure. she would say, okay, like it's, it's time to come upstairs. But yeah, that was my first experience. Cool. I still love y'all. I still love y'all. Somebody say, I love hip hop. Say, I love hip hop. Say, I love hip hop. I love hip hop. Say, I love hip hop. Just the music, the energy. Seeing people react and respond to the DJ doing cut, cutting, scratching, mixes, people dancing. Uh-huh. You know, all these people were older than me, um, but it was just exciting. And um, every now and then, somebody would get on and rap, uh-huh. and um, I got to see the reaction of the crowd, of the you know the party goers from the, the MCs. So all of that was just exciting to me. So to be clear and to be historically accurate, the Juice Crew was formed way before I ever even got associated with Marley Mall. Um, Juice Crew All Stars was a record that came was that was played on the radio by Marley Mall. It featured Craig G, uh, Glamorous, uh, Cool G Rap, I believe was on it. Um, there's a couple other people. Um, Shan, uh, maybe. Shan was on it. I think I think Debbie D might have been on it too. Or don't quote me. The original, you know, because Mr. Magic was the one who came up with the name. Yeah. He was he was known as Sir Juice. That was like his other uh, other nickname. nickname. Yeah. So he decided that everybody that was down with him was gonna be Juice Crook since he was Sir Juice. So he started using that term on the radio. Oh, okay. Um and this is way before I even met Marley Maul. So it, it definitely formed before I ever even came into the picture. Um when I got there, it was already established. Um and you know, when the symphony when I was when I was featured in the symphony uh-huh. video on that song that was when the rest of the world said, oh, Ace, he's down with Juice Crew. Cause he's, okay, he's that's in, he's in officially. That song. Yeah, that, that made me official. Baptized. Yep. Well, what I think was important about me being associated with that crew was the amount of talent that was around. It, it let me know that you had to come with your A game, you had to be ready your, your your rhymes better be on point because you got can't big daddy can you got coogee rap you got bismarck e, you got craig g all these guys rhyme and setting the bar setting up. the bar and, and 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 you know i'm not going to say pressure but it was definitely i understood inside of my mind that if i was going to jump on a song or be a part of something that i, I better bring i better bring it i better bring it uh-huh. before nostalgia marco produced a song on my album along hot summer he produced a song oh, called okay. do it man featuring noid Rapper Noid, um, that was our first real, true collaboration was Do It Man. And in those days, we would trade. So do a beat for my album, and I'll do a song for your album. So that was the trade. So the trade was for the song with Noid was, ended up being Nostalgia. Um, he ended up shooting a video for it. It wound up being this huge, huge record. So fans around the world were like, yo, you guys got to do some more music together. But this was like, you know, mid two thousands, like two thousand seven, exactly. something like that. So it took a while um, because I was doing a lot of other things, uh-huh. and we hadn't really explored it yet. We weren't really seriously thinking about uh-huh. doing 
an album together. It was just like we were boys. He went on the road with me a couple times. He actually was my tour DJ for a couple of runs. A couple of runs I did with Ed OG. He was our DJ for that. Um, and he opened up for us when we had, when I had my group EMC out. He came out on the road as an opening act with Torre. So that's when the relationship started to grow. We got to know each other and stuff like that from those tours. And then um, after I finished with the Son of Yvonne, M.A. Doom, Son of Yvonne album, it was around that time. Um, oh, no, it was actually after I did the uh, the Fallen Season album, which came out in 2016. It was after that that we our, both of our schedules became free because Mark, Marco started doing production for a lot of different people, yeah. Rusty Jukes and Torre and... Um, it was um, uh, Barrel. Barrel Brothers. I didn't know what my next project was going to be. I had a few beats that he had been sending me beats throughout. So I was I started, you know, checking out some of the beats he sent me. I'm like, yo, hold this one, hold this one, hold this one. And I finally I said, okay, I'm going to start writing to some of these beats. And, and, and that's really how it started. I, I was The Brooklyn song was me trying to paint a different picture of Brooklyn because there's so many songs about Brooklyn, but... In general, they all are talking about the crime, the all the negative stuff, the drug dealing, the this, the that. It's always like scared, trying to scare people away from Brooklyn. But I just wanted to show that there's a beautiful side uh -huh. to Brooklyn as well. You know, um, the just the tree line blocks, the brownstones, the give some hope somehow. Yeah, the people, just just the, the loving part of the, of the, of uh -huh. the borough of Brooklyn. So that was just my way of doing a different version of of, of my city. It's a prequel Context. in terms of Mark because the first album, Brooklyn Story, was telling the story of Marco leaving Canada, coming to okay. coming to Brooklyn to try to be a producer. So this album, the uh, fall, I mean the um, Richmond Hill, takes you back to his birth. So uh -huh. the album so starts with that, right? starts with him being born, and it kind of takes you through his childhood gradually, a little bit. Um, but just gives you insight into before he came to Brooklyn, what was going on. He was he was he lived in this neighborhood called Richmond Hill, went to a Catholic school, and you know um, he went through a lot of trials and tribulations as a young teenager uh -huh. with substance abuse and things like that. So knowing that story, I just felt like it was a story that needed to be told, and I, I felt like the world would somebody would benefit from hearing his story. He'd never really been public about it before. Uh -huh. And I asked his permission, you know, do you mind if we reveal this to uh -huh. the world? He was like, you know, okay, sure. So, and I, I, I feel like it's going to help some people, you know, people that are d dealing with their demons. And identify. Yeah. And, 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 and to see that he overcame it, that he has never gone backwards. He's never touched a drug or, or, or a drop of alcohol uh -huh. since his uh, rehab when he was 16 years old. The secret is still being a fan of the music. Um still being a fan of other artists other mcs hearing music other by other artists and getting inspired to do music um i still feel like i'm trying to prove myself um people think that's weird after 30 years but every time i go in the booth to, with a, with a, to lay a song down i feel like i'm still trying to prove to the non-believers because there's many of them out there um especially even in my own hometown so i'm always out there just trying to remind people that I could do a, I could do this a little bit. I could rap a little bit. I I could put a few few words together and they rhyme and it's pretty good. I think that um the payoff from going in the studio all those hours, long days, long nights recording, the payoff is getting a chance to get on a stage in front of an audience and see the work that you put in now be you know um realized in front of people who can hear it and they they connect with the music that you made. You thought when you made it that they were going to connect with it, but to actually see it firsthand and to get that love back and to get that those reactions and get this and the you know people doing, it's like wow. Like so, I really did do something that was worthwhile. And then people coming up to you after the show to tell you this song had an impact on my life. This song changed my life. This album, you know, I heard this album when I was eighteen and I was you know about I wanted to kill myself. All those kinds of stories make it worthwhile so i encourage all artists to get out there um and share your music share your story with with, with the audience and, and and see what it's like there's a there's a whole world out there it's not just the u.s yeah. <laughs>
bitches score. Yeah. Every week it's like a Friday ritual. You got a mind of your own, so let it be known.